Weiss, CEO of the Trans Tasman Business Circle in our Sydney CBD studio. Johnny, thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate your company. Um, obviously, we've seen that recent um, Cricket World Cup in focus. Um, is this just one example, really, of how both of our countries are working more closely together for global success? Good morning, Leanne and James. Yes, indeed. Uh, the Cricket World Cup is an example of where both countries combined our relative strength and, uh, and our skills for global competition and the fact that we work together to secure the Cricket World Cup uh, is an indicative of what we're doing as two economies. Uh, it had wonderful economic outcomes, I must share with you as a Kiwi, not necessarily the results, uh, but uh, the New Zealanders go home to an economy in surplus uh, that lasts longer than four years. So that's, uh, so we are working better together. The Cricket World Cup, we had a, a common visa uh, which allowed visitors to come to both countries where both uh, governments work together on that. So very good signs for the future. Mm -hmm. Despite the, the economies working closely together, as you do suggest, do you think there is still more to be done, though, in terms of combining our strengths? Um, and if so, what are some of the key areas of collaboration? Sure. So basically after 30 plus years of close economic relations, we've really built a single economic market. Uh, there are very few uh, major impediments to companies doing business in the other countries. So having built the scale of companies on both sides of the ditch, we certainly now need to look more and better outwards in areas such as tourism, infrastructure, education, uh, agriculture, these sorts of areas where we're combining and the best of both is absolutely the way for our economies in the future. Mm -hmm. um, is the, the lack of mutual recognition of imputation credits, for example, one of the major barriers to investment? Uh, absolutely. Uh, this has been a long-standing uh, issue where uh, those uh, investors on both sides of the ditch uh, a double tax on their uh, uh, dividends. Uh, the business community is working uh, on this uh, issue. We believe we can be getting closer to it. Uh, we'll see what uh, the implications of the uh, tax review are with respect to the uh, imputation credits. But uh, we're hopeful that we can work, continue to work to get some success on that front. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the results of that Trans-Tasman Business Circle survey, one of the key trends is that Australian businesses are losing confidence and New Zealand is plateauing after seeing some relatively high optimism. So can you take us through what's been driving this? Sure. Well, it's really the, the politics of the situation more than anything. Uh, New Zealand has stable government, very well-led government, uh, managing uh, very well its relations with the business community and implementing slow, gradual economic reform with wonderful economic outcomes. Australia, we don't need to look beyond the headlines of Sky and, and, the, and, the, and the printed media to see the challenges the government has here. Business wants confidence, it seeks confidence and when it gets it, as in New Zealand, we see the investment, the hiring patterns all boosted upwards. Mm -hmm. What's the mood like in both um, you know, Australia and New Zealand in terms of companies? Uh, well, you know, I guess the uh, business leaders say we can't control the politics too much, so we better well invest positively in our own organisations. So businesses are very well, uh, very confident about their own outlook because they have to be. Mm -hmm. Um, a consistent trend that you are seeing is that both countries are reporting it harder to find staff. Um, can you take us through why we're seeing this? Sure. Well, we've got uh, growth in the New Zealand economy, Christchurch rebuild, the housing market uh, sucking skills out, even from Australia. As we see a reverse trend in migration, Kiwis going back to New Zealand uh, for the first time in many years and Australians going there in search of jobs. Uh, in Australia, the mix from the mining sector back into the major sector, you know, we're not into the other sectors, we're not necessarily finding those skills. Mm -hmm. we, we've got some sectors like, uh, you know, uh, the renewable energy sector, for instance, uh, an area of uh, considerable uh, lack of uh, policy reform and outlook uh, impacting on investment and therefore on jobs. Um, and I just wanted to finally get your thoughts um, in terms of capital expenditure. Are we seeing any upward growth um, in CapEx coming out of Australia and New Zealand? Well, certainly in Australia, you know, can, uh, bearing in mind the sort of grumpiness uh, of uh, business leaders, there is a steady, in the last six to nine months, steady increase in capital expenditure. That augurs well, uh, replacing uh, old equipment with new, uh, certainly in the technology area, much more investment. So that's a positive sign. Uh, new Zealand tends to have a steady increase in capex. It bobbles around a little bit more. 
but both countries are investing much more in, in that side of their business, which is good. Mm, absolutely. Johnny, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne.